Let's look at the monomers that make up polypeptides, the amino acids. Here are the 20 that are used in all living things to make up our polypeptide chains and therefore our proteins. Ten of them on the left have a charge either because they are acidic or basic. If they're acidic, they can lose a proton by dissociation and become negatively charged. If they're basic, that's arginine, lysine, and histidine here, they have amino groups in their side chains that can gain protons and become positively charged. The other five in the list are uncharged but polar because they have components in the side chain that contain atoms linked by polar covalent bonds and therefore have partial positive and negative charges, allowing them to interact in ways we'll see in a moment. The 10 amino acids on the right are nonpolar, largely hydrophobic, and you will see they tend to aggregate with one another in order to remove themselves from the presence of water. Uh, if you look at any amino acid, you could actually call it a basic acid instead of an amino acid. We just don't think that's a very elegant term. But as you can see, every amino acid will have a positive and a negative charge at either end. The Germans refer to this as zweiter ions, that means two ions because they have an amino group which has acquired a proton and thus a positive charge, and they have a carboxyl group which has lost a proton and therefore has a negative charge. These dissociations or proton acquisitions occur at neutral pH, which is why all amino acids essentially are zweiter ions. They combine in the cell by the process of translation by dehydration synthesis or water removal to form the polypeptide. What forms between the polypeptides are sometimes called peptide bonds, but they're really not bonds. They're peptide linkages composed of several different bonds, which I have circled here. In fact, dehydration synthesis in general doesn't result in the formation of bonds, but rather of linkages. And finally, we talk often about polypeptides with reference to the C-terminal end or the N-terminal end. We say these things in order to say, oh, look, there's a functional component of the polypeptide near the C-terminus or near the N-terminus of the protein. It helps us to talk about proteins in terms of their function. What I just spoke about was the primary structure of proteins. The primary structure is simply the amino acid sequence.